it's officially soup weather and I've got to get over it. I had an issue with soups. We all know I called them dirty water. I said that they were a waste of my mouth, but Chef Dev opens my eyes to soups for the soul. It's it's voluptuous, it's oh, sexy, it's scrunching. exciting. Then DIY doggy treats, so tasty, you might want to share it with your dog. Should we try? Should we? <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe just a little. Oh! And later, Frankie Flowers shares what's trending in 2024. You don't yeah. have to follow the trend. You don't have to be on trend. No. You want to no. do what you're doing. He never is. And he's seen the future of your garden. It's very, it's modern. It's like an orb, like an alien it is. orb. It is an orb. Read my future. It's City Life with Tracy Moore. Fantastic. Welcome to City Line. It's Monday today. I am still getting used to saying this. It's 2024. <laughs> yeah! A whole new year. So we're kickstarting this week with some tech to keep your resolutions going. If you've fallen off, don't worry, we don't judge. Some plant trends, homemade doggy treats, and scrumptious soups for the soul. So please welcome my guests. We got Lisa Chang, Frank Ferragini, <laughs> Felicia Chong. Yeah! Chef Devin Rajkumar. Yeah. <laughs> soup, soup, soup. Now, we've gone, if we go back and rewind a little bit, okay. I had an issue with soups. We all know I called them dirty water. I said that they were a waste of my mouth. I've grown up, I've evolved, I've come a long way, and I'm kind of now stepping toward my soup era. So I love that a lot of people are thinking about making their resolution to have less waste. Absolutely. And that's something you do all the time. This is something we should be thinking about all the time. How do you usually, why do you always think about that uh, on the daily? A lot of food is getting thrown out yeah. that we could be reusing. Online, on my channel, I'm doing a lot of stuff with commonly thrown out ingredients. Uh, like we're doing a potato and leek soup right now, a classic one, and yeah. there is waste that is created right. in this recipe itself. Uh, but carrot peels, like I don't peel ginger all the time. Yeah. There's little small things that we can do at home. Also talking about your evolution that you've had, yes. I hope I've been a part of that. Well, it's actually your soups. Like when yeah. I'm at the grocery store, I'm trying to think of things, what's healthy, what's quick, and I know that you're out of the soup game, but yeah. your soups were a very big part of my evolution, Good. chef! I'm glad, I'm very yes, glad. Yes, you got me here, but I would much rather have you make the soup live in front of me because it already smells amazing. So we are doing potato and leek, a classic. Yes. Now, what is a leek? And notice how I'm talking and start cooking. This is how much stuff we have to I'll get through. I'll be your banner. Okay? This is the humble leek. So from the Allium family? Yes. <laughs> you do such a good job. Banana. We have onions, we have garlic, we have chives, we have shallots, and we have leeks. Yes. Now, we only use to cook and break down the white part, the bulb part of it, similar to a lemongrass. When it starts to get right. dark green or dark brown, we don't use it at that point. Okay. So what we would do is chop off the top, mm -hmm. and then this we would take and we'd throw, we're not gonna throw this away. We're not going no, to. No, we're gonna take this and freeze it. This can be, go into our braised short rib. This can go into any soup or any stock or yeah. any chicken soup that you have. So take this, freeze it. Now, Beautiful. for the demo purpose, I'm gonna put this very large leek away. It's humongous. This is also a leek. Okay. Okay, a little bit sweeter, it's a little bit smaller. Right. Again, I'll just trim off the top here. And save it for later. And now what we do for this partic particular application, like mm -hmm. if you're doing crispy leeks, for example, then we would take this and like back at catering, we would take this and chop it really fine. Wow, that's and, amazing. And then from here, what you do is you take this and then you'd flour it or cornstarch it and you have yeah. crispy leeks. Yum. Now for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it down a little bit smaller. Okay. And make sure we're not burning anything. Uh, while we're cooking. Right, and you'll now, tell us in a bit why you do not want those onions to go brown. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when we open up our leeks, these grow underground. So there yeah. could be a lot of dirt in yeah. them. There might so, even be some creepy crawlies. Abs absolutely. Right? Yeah, it's all protein, right? So we take, 
So we take we take our leaks. Wash and if, them out. If you see any dirt, <laughs> if you see any dirt, then what we're going to want to do is essentially just kind of rinse it out with uh, with some cold water. I'm hypnotized. It's the knife skills for me. You've been watching me chop forever. I know. Almost Has it ten, been a decade? Uh, March is 10 years. Oh, my god. Yeah, so you've been watching this for a long time. You know what? I haven't learned anything, but I still like it. I love it. It's fun to watch. So so we have our onions going in here. Uh, we can add some garlic into this as well. Very now, nice. Now, you brought up a good point just a few moments ago. Is like, yeah. we don't want to caramelize these too much. When you're cooking at home, if you're doing something like a potato and leek soup, mm -hmm. maybe you want to keep a lot of that, you know, lighter color in it. Yeah. And if you're taking the onions very far or the garlic very far, then in that case, your end product's going to be a little bit darker. Right. Similar to like a risotto. Right. You're caramelizing, or sorry, you're sweating off your onions and your garlic. Right. Uh, because you don't want to get too much color and then you get those brown bits um, in, the, in the end product. You want it to all be uniform color. Absolutely. Nice and light. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. garlic's going in to our party. Beautiful. Now, I was talking about this a little bit earlier. Yeah. When we were cooking with onions and garlic, and just let me get the potatoes in right now yeah, as well. Yeah, go for it. So I'm using uh, Yukon Gold, but if you want to yeah. use russet, I'm just peeling it and getting it in there. When Beauty. you're using onion and garlic, yeah. you know I'm a big flavor guy. Yes. You know I come on the show and I bring like 400 spices when I'm cooking. So many. Trying to scale it back a little bit. Okay. Make things a little bit more accessible. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm doing is using onion powder and garlic powder. On top of the real onion and the real this garlic. This is like using dried mushrooms in a mushroom recipe. You're using a concentrated, intense dried version of it that yeah. we are rehydrating. Okay, love okay, it. Okay, so we have yeah. onions and garlic in here. They are going to caramelize, but at the same time, we're using the dried version of it to just, like, really send that flavor home. It's going to make all the difference. Layer that flavor. Here we have leeks um, that I carefully chopped yes, earlier. Yes, did. So these are all going into the mix. Now we're going to give this a stir. Um, a lot of recipes will call for chicken stock. Yep. I'm using veg stock today. I think nice. the recipe that, that City Line has is for chicken stock, but you know, use whatever you want. Even yeah. you can even use water in a stock cube at home, like a low okay. sodium or, or an organic stock cube. Yeah. Already this smells amazing. It smells so good. Soup is about layering flavors. Yeah. I can't believe you said dirty water. I'm sorry. I'm okay. just saying this was the old Tracy. The new Tracy's like, mmm, delicious flavor. Soup is so, it's just so mm. warm. Uh, it's comforting. It's easy to make. We can make it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And it's all about layering flavors. That's okay. a lovely so vessel there. It's a beautiful vessel. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add some salt. We also have some rosemary that we can add in there. Nice. I'm just going to pull some off the stem. And then same with the thyme leaves. Just pull some off. You don't want to add too much because when we go to blend it, it's going to have all these little bits. You got a couple minutes, chef. Okay, amazing. So we stir this all around. We want to add stock to cover it, and then we want to bring this to a boil. Okay. After this is 25 minutes down the road. Right. Okay. So everything's in here. It's cooked. It's all soft. What we mm -hmm. do from here is we blend it. To do you want to give us a tip when you're using a, a hand blender? Because I've done this very wrong. Yes, I'm going to show you something right now. Right? We need a tall, narrow vessel. So I'm going to turn this on an angle. Yeah. And I'm going to pulse it this way. You need to have that bottom part covered in liquid. Yeah, the best... <laughs> The, the if best, it's not covered in liquid, it's The best thing you can do is have a tall, narrow vessel. Yeah. And then you're going to blend this. After several minutes of blending, and if you want it really thin and silky, then just use a high-powered blender. Okay. We have the finished product here. Beauty. See, I went and prepped all of this for you so you could see the multiple stages. Can we give it right? up for Chef yeah. Deb? He went and prepped all of the stages. So this is the final product. Mm -hmm. Very silky. Back in the restaurants, back in the catering days, we would pass this through a, a chinois, a fine china cap, just to get oh. every little bit out of it. But this is the consistency that we want. It's it's voluptuous, it's oh, sexy, it's, it's exciting. You know, we're gonna add yes. uh, some thyme leaves on top of this. That's nice. And then classic preparation is to add some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna add a little bit of bacon. And this is our potato oh, that and is leaf such a beautiful soup. thing. I wanted someone to come up and try. Did you want in the green uh, sweater to come? Come up and try it. Can you get out? Yeah, come on up. Come on up. Come on up and try it. Yeah. I have Thank spoons you. here. Oh, you got it? Do you have a spoon? Oh, beauty. Okay, come on up. What is your name and are you a soup girl? My name is Christina and I love soup. My oh my gosh. Here's a spoon. Okay, so try some of that. Are you okay with the meat? Are you okay with the bacon? Oh who's, who's not okay with the bacon? <laughs> Have a have a taste. The recipe is CityLine.tv. It's good, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be back later with another cold weather soup. Let's go to break.
Frank, stay with us. Good, right? Coming up, technology that will keep you on track. Just gives you your metrics at the end of the day and gives you tips on are you eating the right things, are you consuming the right things, and also how that will affect your sleep. time when we ditch our resolutions so let's get some help with that whether you're trying to stick to getting healthy or maybe you want to be more organized Lisa Chang is here with some tech ideas that can make your journey a bit easier maybe even enjoyable okay. right Lisa that is a big task but yes. I'm gonna try to make things like eating healthier yeah. and exercising a bit more enjoyable while using tech. So one of yeah. the biggest things that I can say is that 12 years ago, I started my health and wellness journey. Yeah. And the key to success for me was staying consistent, mm. which Trace, I know you do mm -hmm. as well. Small bursts of anything consistently can really set you up for success. But yeah. another big thing is tracking your data. So that's where the right. tech comes into play, and we're gonna talk all about that today. Okay, first tool that we, we might wanna use to help us out. Yes, okay, so we're gonna dive right into nutrition. Okay. I think coming off the holidays, we wanna make sure that we're getting back on track, we're eating the right things. Yeah. Not only because that's moving us towards a fitness goal, but there's also a connection between what you're eating and how you feel. Absolutely. So, my fitness pal is one of the most celebrated apps out there, mm -hmm. not only because it's free, but next because it's easy to use. Now okay. what this app is going to do is allow you to put in key metrics. So for example, what you're eating every day, mm -hmm. so your breakfast, lunch, snacks, and dinner, plus how much water you're taking. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, it's gonna give you a synopsis of all of the things that you consumed. Okay. So right here, T, what you're gonna see is sort of my dashboard, right? Yeah. So it's, it's not only taken um, all of my key indicators when I set up my profile, so things like my goals, um, how much calories I should be taking in every day, but mm -hmm. it's also going to separate your macros, so your carb carbohydrates, your fat, and your protein. Okay. Now, for today, for example, if I wanted to log my breakfast, you can see right here I had some peanut butter along with multigrain toast. Mm -hmm. Delicious. But if I want to add a snack, so, mm -hmm. you know, I get hungry real fast. Mm -hmm. So I need She's to She's an eat. eater. I am an eater. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of ways. That's what I like about you. <laughs> so there's a couple of ways that you can put in your meal. Okay. Number one, if I wanted to have this bowl of strawberries, for example, I can scan that bowl of strawberries okay. and with all of the information that the app collects, what it's gonna do is it's going to populate the fact that it, I have that cup of strawberries yeah. and it's gonna allow me to load it in the app. Now, that's, inc that's incredible. So you can have like real food out there instead of actually having to type in everything and I think that that's what makes this elite. Absolutely. Very good. Now, another thing you can do is track using the barcode. Okay. Now, when you're adopting a healthier habit, chances are you're eating, you know, maybe gluten-free toast, omega-3 eggs. Yeah. If I wanted to put these particular eggs into the app, what I could do is just scan the barcode and it will populate those omega-3 eggs as well. Sort of like you're doing your own self-checkout. So exactly. you can put this in. Oh yeah, we're all doing all of our own self-checkout, right? <laughs> why, 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 are, why is it like this now? Trace, I don't know. I don't want to do it myself. Exactly. But anyways, yes, it's the same thing. You get the barcode in there. Oh, yeah. we can do it. So I have it up and running again. So right there, you can see right here. <gasps> it's detected not only the fact omega that it's omega-3 eggs, eggs, but large. also the brand. Amazing. So really okay. cool. Again, it just gives you your metrics at the end of the day and gives you tips on are you eating the right things? Are you consuming the right things? And also how that will affect your sleep as well. Ooh, I love that. The fact that it's easy to use, once again, is really a success indicator that you're going to use this app. So again, great tip right there. Protein, protein, protein is what I'd wanna see, right? As exactly. we get older, you need so much protein, so that's great. All right, let's talk movement and fitness. Have you got some apps to help us with that? I do, especially as the weather's getting colder and it gets harder to get in your car and actually get to the gym. Yeah. One of my biggest recommendations is doing an at-home workout. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this. If you are an Android user, what I'm gonna recommend is using the Peloton app. 
Now, you don't have to necessarily have the expensive bike to use the app. You yeah. can just download the app. And right here, Trace, as you can see, it gives you all kinds of different workouts and all durations of workouts as well. And you can schedule when you're going to do that during oh, the week. Cool. So I really actually like this a lot. Yeah. Now, the one that I use the most is Apple Fitness Plus. Me too. And I got to say, this saved me during the pandemic. I know you agree. Yeah. Not only is it going to give you all styles of workouts, you can even do dance and kickboxing and all kinds of things, but it gives you meditation as well. So you want to zen out, yeah. you want to do something for your mental health, this is a great way to do it. And it's super easy to use if you have an Apple Watch, away you go, yeah. you just connect it to your watch, press play, and you can do the workout right there. So I really actually like that. After every single workout, I would do a little meditation. I thought that was awesome. Or a cool down, which yeah, a lot of us Yeah, or a cool down, which do. is lovely. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about organization. That's another thing that's really on our mind yes. uh, this time of year. It is. Okay, so a couple of things that I'm going to recommend when it comes to organizing our tech, make sure that you're taking all of those unnecessary photos, you're deleting them, you're oh, putting right. things in files, you're deleting your apps, deleting your subscriptions that you don't need, yeah. but also that you're staying on top of your updates. Make sure you're organizing your cables as well. It's a simple thing, but you don't necessarily want all the spaghetti oh, in your home. What a mess. Yeah, you definitely want to organize that. Yeah. Also organize your agenda. Get things off the paper and into an app. Yeah. I love the Todoist app, not only because you can keep track of your own agenda, okay. but you can automate everybody else's calendar in the app as well. So now they're not only asking you what they've got going on, now everybody can see what everybody's got going on. So we I all really saw like the that. list, so you can just follow it now. Exactly. We all saw it, very good. Uh, well, you're in the kitchen now. Yes, okay, so now is a great time to organize your closet and your cupboards. Yes. So when you are adopting a healthier habit, chances are you're going to be buying things like this, protein powders, collagen powders. Yeah. Now, Trace, I know you have seen this before. When you buy a new container- Look at the emptiness. There's so much space yeah. in there. One of the things that you want to do is empty and consolidate things into a smart container system. Okay. So this is the cube system from Zwilling. What I like about this is that it's a vacuum system. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not only going to keep things fresh, but it's also going to allow you to update in your app how much you've got left in the container and also the expiry date. So now you don't Ooh, have to think about that either. I love that system. Save your food and keep it fresh. Guess what? One lucky winner is going to get a Zwilling Cube set for your pantry worth $250. Yes, somebody's winning that here. Thank you, Lise. And we've got more City Line coming up after the break. Stay with us. So good. My coming up, homemade dog treats that capture my attention. Perfect for a perimenopausal woman, too. Yes. I mean, <laughs> some she, bone broth, some uh, yeah, salmon, salmon blueberries. some blueberries. That's looking like I should be snacking on that I know. as well. It's time to pamper your four-legged love with some homemade doggy treats. Felicia is here with some easy recipes. Okay, you're a good dog mom. Like, I have never sat there and cooked up a bowl of anything for my Aussie, and I love that dog. So I love this. Tell me about your, your dog, who is super cute. She's three years old. She's a yes. corgi. Her name is Toby, because we got her from Manitoba. So we named her Aww. Toby. Um, she's the queen of the house. Whatever she wants, she gets, unfortunately. <laughs> and uh, she's a picky eater. So oh. she hates any vegetables. We have a really hard time feeding her those. Yeah. So the fact that we were able to make all of this, and she loved everything. She ate them. Ate, loved, devoured, asks for them, begs for them. And it's Ooh. so easy to make. OK, all good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start with your very first treat. So this is really great for gut health. So yeah. any upset tummies, Toby gets upset tummies a lot, a actually, lot <laughs> TMI. Yeah. Um, so this is with Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt, no um, added sugar. You're just gonna do a quarter cup of that. Okay. And then mix it in with some water, just enough so that it's nice and silky and runs a little bit, not too much. Good protein there in that Greek yogurt. Exactly, right? and tons of probiotics. So you're gonna get yeah. really great gut health from this. And then after you're done mixing until it's nice and runny, you can put it into your molds. And I like to just fill it in like halfway through because you want a little two-layered fancy moment for your dog. Nice. 
Then you can add some um, pumpkin puree. Yeah. Now, pumpkin puree is really high in fiber, so it's gonna attract all that excess water. So if your dog does have diarrhea, this is a great ingredient. Yeah. It's also a natural stomach soother. So I love to give this to Toby almost every day, actually. She needs it. <laughs> yeah, well, the fact that it's in a cute little treat, because yeah. I try and give Ozzy the pumpkin all the time with the bad bellies, and it's, it's really difficult. It is. If it's in a nice little cute paw like that. Exactly, and just add some honey, makes it a little bit oh. nicer of a treat for them yeah. too. Mm -hmm. And honey they love as well. So you'd put the pumpkin puree in the mold. Do you freeze it? For about two to three hours after. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. And then you pop them out and they're super cute. And the, yeah, the mold does all the work for you. Yeah, I love those molds. Yeah. Okay, moving right along. We have a cute little doggy biscuit. Yes. What's that gonna do for the for the dog? So this is great for joint health. We want our dogs ah. running around as much as possible, as comfortably as possible. Yeah. So here we have a dog bone made of bone broth. You can okay. use chicken, you can use beef. Toby's actually allergic to chicken, so we have beef bone broth here. Okay. No sugar, no flavored added. You just add it to a half cup of water and then mix it all into food processors. This is actually the easiest treat to make. Yeah. You're gonna add a whole can of, of salmon. Okay. This has high omega-3, so it's gonna reduce any inflammation in the joints while yeah. the bone broth adds collagen to their um, their joints so as they age they lose collagen in their connective tissues and that right. could lead to like muscle pain joint pain arthritis tendonitis yeah. so these two together are like a magic combination uh -huh. and then eight to ten blueberries because those are antioxidants as well so it helps to reduce the inflammation reduce joint pain mm -hmm. there is a bit more sugar content in your blueberries, so you want to just give them eight to ten per serving oh dogs and sugar don't mix eh? you don't yeah you can have a little bit of sugar but yeah. not too much so eight to ten is like your perfect your perfect ratio so perfect for Toby I would say perfect for a perimenopausal woman too yeah. I mean <laughs> Some she, bone broth, some seriously, uh, yeah, salmon, salmon, salmon blueberries. some blueberries. That's looking like I should be snacking on that know, as well. I know, she loves it. She begs for this Very every single cool. time. And if you're worried about food insecurity, we know a lot of people are lining up at food banks and what have you. I want you to just to think about the fact that this is likely cheaper and healthier <laughs> than buying the treats that you get in the big bag. True. So it's not always about, it's not really just being bougie. It can be cheaper to do this at home. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Okay, let's move on to this one because I see some veggies. Yeah, so this is our way of sneaking veggies into her diet because she hates veggies. I understand her. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we have boiled carrots. You have about two carrots and carrots are high in vitamin A. Great for their eye health, but also immune system and yes. their skin and their coat. We have some spinach that you're gonna boil together for about a minute. Spinach is really high in vitamin, iron, mm. helps with their energy level, their immune system, and just overall health. Yeah. We're gonna add some oats. If you don't have oat flour, you can just blend up the oats and create your own flour, nice okay. fine flour. Yeah. And then this is a magic ingredient, peanut yes. butter, that makes it actually edible for picky eaters like Toby. Yeah. You roll it out like you normally would with cookie dough, use cutie little cookie cutters like I have here. These are adorable. I know. Okay, very cute. Now you say these are all natural and they're actually good enough for any of us to eat? I mean. Should we? Should we try? Should we? <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe just a little. Oh, I smell good. It's not bad. Not bad. It tastes like peanut butter. It tastes like peanut butter. It's peanut butter. It's not bad. Yeah. If you're in a peanut butter, you'd be into that. Yeah. Not bad at I all. I see you, Toby. Okay. Right? Yeah. All right. Toby's lucky. Toby's lucky. Um, let's talk about ice cream. I'm still chewing my peanut butter. I know. It's like, mmm. <laughs> mm. Okay. Fibrous. I, very mm. fibrous. So these are for if you're if you're not a baker like myself or yeah. you don't have the time buy your treats, these are really fun. This is like a nice treat by the, for the end of the day. After your dinner, this is the Hungry Hunter frozen yogurt with berries. Oh my gosh. I know, it's like ice cream for your dog. That is so awesome. So what, they just? Exactly, okay. lick, lick right, off, light right through the cup. Yeah. It's made with strawberries, blackberries, and blueberries, so high in antioxidants, high in fiber, so great for just anti, like anti-inflammatory, yeah. prolongs the aging process, it's, oh, wow. I know. Very nice. Yes. Okay, I was saying before that that wasn't bougie, but this is. What's in here? There's lobster <laughs> in here. Lobster and uh -huh. cod for the I know. doggy. I wish I could have this every single day. Treats. Crunchy, nutritious, and really only two ingredients, the yeah. cod and the lobster. So high in omega-3, yes. really great for the skin, the coat, inflam inflammation, and just overall health. So really nice two unique treats if you don't want to spend the two minutes I took to just make any of these, you Very know? Very nice. Listen, that Toby is one lucky bee. Did you hear that, Toby? <laughs> she really is. Did you hear that? 
She's got a good dog, Mamo. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely treats. I might try some of these on Ozzy. Let's go to break. But first of all, recipes on cityline.tv. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Now let's go to break. We'll be right back. What's going to be all the rage for your garden next year? Frankie Flowers knows. I dress up for this one because it is the trend report. It's time to join the party. We want to shower you with fun, prizes, and unbelievable surprises. Head to citywide.tv slash tickets and see the show you love come to life. Baby, it's cold outside, but that makes now the perfect time to plan for your garden and the sunshine to come. It makes me excited. And we've brought our very own ray of sunshine, Frank Ferragini. The sunshine is coming, right, Frankie? Yeah, after every storm, even if it's the winter, the sun will always shine. And so we're kind of thinking about what's going to happen when the sun does shine. Yes, and it's actually kind of exciting to think about it. And while we're stuck indoors, it's the perfect time to talk about trends for this year. Gardens are no different. Yeah. This is when we start to like to dream. What are we going to see for gardens in 2024? So I dressed up for this one because it is the trend report, by yeah. the way. So uh, garden marketers get together and they really kind of talk about different trends that are out there. One of the number one trends is a new word that they're calling. It's called hoardy futurism. Horty futurism. Horticulture and yes. the future together. Horty futurism. Okay. So you can see behind us here, Let's we have, of course, the incorporation of solar panels and really using some of the new uh, technologies that we're embracing as well. You can see there as well. And at the same time, there's certain, certain, certain type of lighting that we can use as well. So some of the new technology that will allow us to make our gardens a little bit more interesting but modern by using modern versions of technology together with, of course, Ooh. nature to really accessorize the garden that's out there. It's very, it's modern. It's like an orb, like an alien it is. orb. It is an orb. Read my future. But well, I like the beautiful little twinkle lights you saw in the picture before. LEDs, right? That is gorgeous. So way more efficient for you yes, as well. Yes, yes. Uh, they will light up quite easily, and then they can be also put on timers and also different types of programs so they can even yeah. play by music and all those different oh things that are out there as well. Okay, your next trend, taking me right back to the 90s. You totally, totally. What is it? Look at this, goth gardening. Oh! So one of the biggest colors in the last few years have been some of the darker colors. Just to let you know, there is no true black flower that's out there. Yeah. That what you see there is more of a purple, but this is something that's becoming more and more popular in terms of some of the different plant material. <laughs> so Bless you. It's okay. Bless you. I'm we allergic to this goth flower. You're, you're, you're <laughs> allergic to the trends that are coming up. But take oh, a look at this pretty. as well. This is actually a dyed rose. So it's done with this. This food coloring is put within. And so some of the different cut flowers that we're seeing as well outside of gardening are really showing some of those more Stunning. darker. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting Drama. that we're talking about the darkness because when it comes to one of the top colors in gardening, yeah. it's totally the opposite as well. Okay. One of the biggest colors when it comes to new plant material out there is cyber lime. That's the other color that here. Yeah. So that is beautiful. Yeah. Some of the chartreuse greens that we're seeing really yeah. making a popular time. What I love about this variety, which is the limelight hydrangea, you hear me talk about it often. It starts off with that chartreuse green, goes to white, and then a nice pinkish tone. Yeah. But even some of the chrysanthemums out there right now, that lime, chartreuse, bright, happy green, that's the way to be. Listen, I will always be a fan of chartreuse. I find that it's a shock. It's a shock to the system. It brings a lot of joy. It's like a dopamine hit. Yeah. I think it's beautiful in the garden and in clothing. We know in Benjamin Moore's Blue Nova has mm -hmm. been the color for the year, but I love the fact that we might be talking blue or we might be talking that beautiful, vibrant green. Now, and I want to say yeah. well, trends are only trends Such for inspiration. Trends. You don't yeah. have to follow the trend. You don't have to be on trend. No. You want to no. do what you're he doing. He never is. No. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Your next trend, yeah. it's not about bathrooms, right? No. Okay, what's it about? My next trend is all about nature calls. Oh. No, nature I calls. For look, that. look, nature calls <laughs> in terms of the beauty of just letting nature be in itself. You can see the rhythm of this garden by nature just being itself. And a lot of the times we sometimes overthink it, but if you put a bunch of plants together, you put a nice reading bench in there, right now a little bit of the wild, a little bit of the whimsical, still on trend and people want to be out there and be really equal friendly. It's beautiful, and I'm a big fan of wild gardens. My husband's got me more on board with that. I used to like things to be more structured, but he's like, 
let it be wild. That's the joy of nature. Let it breathe. Let it breathe. Let it breathe. Okay. Now, 2024 is the year for uh, eco-friendly, you say. We're all yeah. sort of getting more in that mindset. Yeah, so reclaim. Yeah. So oh, nice. what we're also seeing on trend right now is we're, we're taking things that we have maybe in our recycling bins around our property or maybe things that are found objects, and we're using those in the garden. So right there, you can see a collection of cans. Maybe those were a tomato sauce at one point with yep. the succulents that are there. But as well, we're using even, there's oh. beautiful, you can see the wine bottles turned upside down, the bottom cut out of these, and creating some very interesting, not only garden spaces, but art that's out there. Because gardening is just art in itself. That's stunning. Too bad I don't have any wine bottles at home. I have lots. <laughs> Okay, That's I've, the reason why you, you actually garden, <laughs> so that you can drink. You've got one for the lazy gardener, which well, feels technology. like it might be me. Yeah, so technology, one of the biggest trends is trying to make gardening easier on you. Okay. And of course, we've already shown the robotic uh, different lawnmowers, but there's, if you think about it, it's out there for you. If you want to cut down on work, it's out there for you. Lithium batteries as well. Everything's rechargeable right now. It's still on trend with the Ecos as well. And even for some of the watering systems out there, there are watering systems right now that will, that will measure the weather patterns in your area, what? adjust the watering systems to that, and then also take your soil type, your plant type, and create the best watering schedule to be efficient, not using as much water as possible out there. So technology, making it easier for you, 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 and you. Chartreuse, technology, lazy. Nature solar calls. Plan, nature calls, bathroom. And I'm, anyways, the trends are amazing. They're exciting. Yeah. And it's exactly calls, what we bye. need. Bye. Guess we can't stay up here all day. Time for a break. I'm going to go back down. Stay with us. <laughs> Coming up, Deb is back with soulful soups and secrets from his kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony asked, like, chef, how long does this seal for? How long does this cook for? It cooks till it's done. <laughs>excited about this one the audience is excited i'm excited you're excited it's a curried butternut squash soup with an herb slaw so i love that yeah love they that. were like ooh. <laughs> and i feel like it's well earned it's a well earned woo there's a lot of butternut right? squash soup recipes there's tons but this one is going to be curried yeah and i have to get something off my chest oh say it there's no, no. there's no specific curry yeah. Okay, so if we are currying something or if we're eating a curry, it can mean one of an infinite amount of things. So what right. is a curry? What a, is a curry? A blend of spices with a sauce or a gravy. Got it. Okay, so there's no curry powder here that we're using today, right. but we are combining spices in a wet application, a sauce, a gravy, a soup, yeah. to give us a curried, uh, curry-inspired dish. Good, that's a good lesson. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So we're going to start by putting some ghee, clarified mm -hmm. butter. Um, Ghee is essentially clarified butter, but it's where the milk solids are a little bit caramelized. Okay. So if you have clarified butter, it's not necessarily identical to ghee. Yeah. That's why this is, smells nutty, and it's also a little bit more deeper yellow. Yeah, okay. okay? So ghee goes into uh, the pot, and then we're going to come in with onions, because I said before, we are all about building flavors and building uh, layers in here. We're going to add in some thyme. We're going to add in some rosemary. Okay. And uh, then we're gonna chop up this. I love how you clean up after me. Can it's you what, come it's home? It's my job at home and it's my job at work. This me? is what I do because I am not doing the cooking. I've got to clean. So remember f before we were worried about the onions going brown? So happy. I'm so happy that you're bringing that up. This is my next thing do I was gonna say. Do we not care anymore? No, because we're doing curried butternut squash. I want more caramelization. Got I don't it. worry about the color too much uh, being different. So cut your butternut squash in half to get started. It's a sucker to cut. And then from here. <laughs> That's hard. Uh, be careful. Yeah, be careful. And don't do the, what was it? The, the it, was sled, it was a sled, it was a mallet. <laughs> and a knife? mallet with the knife, like bang. Uh, what we do in kitchens yeah. back in the day, like cutting Parmesan and stuff like that, we yeah. would just take a rag, yeah. put it over the knife, because sometimes, you know, you don't want this to happen. Yeah. So no. I'm just saying, this is what yeah, we would yeah, do yeah. at home. Um, if you got to use the mallet, you know. I don't know. It's Maybe your it's home. just an Instagram thing to, so that it right? looks cool. I don't so know. I'm gonna Chefs put, don't do it. I'm going to put some slits into this going both ways. Be very careful that you don't cut yourself. So be very mindful of what you're doing, how sharp your knife is, etc., etc., etc. Also, what we're going to do here is once you put these slices, uh, we can just spoon out. Using a spoon, you can core out these seeds. Okay, you don't need them. No, but you can use them. You okay. can make you can make a beautiful luscious stock with this. Also, mm. also the seeds you can toast. Mm -hmm. So we scoop that out just like this. Nice. Uh, and then we can move that off to the side. From here, we can take a little bit of oil and just kind of drizzle it on top. 
And then what I like to do is add a little bit of uh, thyme and rosemary, just a kiss of oil. You could use butter. Yeah. I mean, whatever you want to do at home, massage that in. You can add in your rosemary, you can add in your thyme, and then what you want to do is transfer this to a baking dish, and it'll go for about 45 minutes or so. Like, just do it until it's done. I'm yeah. always getting asked, like, Chef, how long does this sear for? How long does this cook for? It cooks till it's done. <laughs> okay? Everyone's we want a thyme! Every well, everyone's oven's different. Everyone's That's butternut true. squash is a different size. It could That's be more true. dense, it could be more ripe. Yeah. Like, there's just so many factors. It could be out of the fridge, it could be tempered. That's like, right. There's a lot of things. This so is an elementary question, but th the scoring, is that in order for the flavors to get in there? It's to allow it to cook a little bit faster oh, than what you faster. said. And okay. it looks really cool. Watch. It does look cool. Yeah. So when you pop it out of the oven now, so this was already roasted, and then this is what it is oh, now. Oh, that looks good. So as this is, like, imagine you take this, that. Uh, herb slaw that, yeah. that, that we're doing today too. That can go on top of this. Um, you can put this on top of Greek yogurt, Looks cottage good. cheese. You can do a lot of different things. Okay. So we're getting really good color here. Yes. Toss, toss, toss. Oh, nice. Caramelisé, d'accord. Wait. After we're gonna add in chili powder. Remember good. we play the spice game? Yeah, but please don't play the game with me right now. Okay, I'm not gonna play it. Uh, we have chili powder. I we don't have, know. We have turmeric going in there. Yeah. Oh, you want to play the maybe, spice game? Maybe, maybe. Only if I know what it is. Humans going in there, and that is. I don't is, know what it is. I don't need to smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them what it is. I don't know. Cor it's coriander. It's obviously coriander. <laughs> so turmeric, chili powder, cumin, coriander. Some I didn't want to play. <laughs> some fenugreek leaves can go in there. Okay. Um, we're gonna chop up some garlic quickly. Did you want this? Uh, yeah, actually, I'll take that okay. from you. It's amazing. <laughs> there you go. Uh, when you're breaking down garlic, if you want to practice your knife skills, you can. Using a box grater is a great idea. Yeah. But what we would do, or what I would do often, is we go across and make these small slices into it like this. Similar mm -hmm. to how you're breaking down an onion, then when you go across, it's already pretty fine. Cool. Uh, but microplane, box grater, yeah. uh, rasp, all these things work really well. I love them so because really, they make really you look fine. like a pro, but it's like the machine's doing all the work. Absolutely. I love that. Absolutely. So we have all these flavors building in here. You could probably smell it, right? Yes. Okay, yes. amazing. It smells unreal. Ginger, mm -hmm. don't have to peel it, but it's all gonna blend. So let me just get it into our vessel here. Uh, again, when it comes down to uh, reducing waste, this is one of those things. Right. So ginger goes in here. You can keep the skin on. So this all gets tossed around, and now what we want to do is spoon in that You're flesh. You're roasted. Yep. So we're spooning it all Squash. in. It smells delicious, and mm -hmm. you want to get every little bit out. Yeah. Now, okay, we're coming to this part of the recipe where okay. this has been cooking. We've added in our stock. And then 20, 25 minutes later, yep. we are now at this stage that I have prepared. Is it chicken? What stock did you use? Uh, I used veg, use but you veg. can use whatever you want. Nice. Now, again, when you're blending this, a tall, narrow vessel, or we just turn it on its yep. side. Do your um, thing. Otherwise, you end up just wearing all of it, right? Which we don't want to do. No. Um, with the spices at home, please use things that you haven't used in a while. Maybe there's some cinnamon, there's some nutmeg, there's some yes. cloves, stuff like that. You can have some fun and use whatever it is that you need to. So we blend this up, we zip this up over here, and then we're left with this like luscious, luscious soup. Okay. Now, so are you? Do you want that to be as silky as you wanted your uh, leek soup? I like this a little bit uh, thicker. I'm gonna yep. come over here quickly yes. uh, to make a quick herb slaw. I have oh, some right, different ingredients part. in here. I forgot so, there was more. Yeah, so we're gonna take some red onion. I'm actually gonna do it right on the board because it's gonna be faster. Okay. And because it's my segment, I'll do what I want, okay? Hey! All right. So we have parsley yeah, here. He saved the attitude for the very end, we huh? Have, we have parsley, we have cilantro yeah. going in here. Um, this is a very fast way for me to do it. Uh, and then we're gonna add in a little bit of lemon juice over here. Very nice. And we're gonna make a very simple herb slaw. This is a very rustic preparation here. We can add different things like sage into this. You mix this all together and you have a beautiful garnish that is wonderful on fish, on steaks, it's on lovely pastas. It's and simple and fresh. It's so fast. You can put chaat masala here. You can do all kinds of different spices and then you take this and add this on top oh. of your curried butternut squash. And now it's herbaceous, it's vibrant, it's yes. fresh and it's colorful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna let you take that shot, but I am gonna get someone from the audience to try it. So oh, yeah. while it's beautiful, let's see how it looks on camera. And my girl in the pink uh, tank top, come on up here, give us her love. Come can I move here. it here? You can now. Yeah, you can now. Let's try this out. 
Oh my gosh, the colors alone. What's your name, my love? Shelly. Shelly, come on this side of me. And then here is the spoon, Shelly. Wow. And we want brutal honesty. So should I pick it up so that it's close <laughs> to you? There you go. Yeah, you want a little mixy mix? Like I cook for a, a living. Little, I mean, it's, it's kind of hot. Yeah? Me too. It's kind of oh, oh, hot, careful. Here. Give it a blow. Yeah. Good, good, good. I have to try it again. <laughs> <laughs> She's taking a page out of my book. I'm like, I think I need to have more. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's she really loves good. it. Recipe at CityLine.tv. Thank you, Dev. Let's go to break. More coming up. Oh, there was a spoon. Come on out. Ready to unleash a brand new you? Wow, you're like a million bucks. <laughs> CityLine's Glam Squad wants to give you the makeover of your dreams. Head to CityLine.tv and click on the makeover tab or just scan the code on your screen. Oh, my goodness. Your new look is only a click away. City Lines experts can help you. We're looking for suggestions. What would you recommend? What tips might you have? With everything from decor dilemmas. Martin, if you can help me with a sunken living room. Fashion finds. And what to wear as the mother of the bride. Fabulous food and so much more. You are in good hands. Send us your videos, pictures, and questions to submissions at cityline.tv or scan the code on your screen to get expert advice for real life. Let me know. Thanks. Many of us have ditched our New Year's resolutions by now, but sometimes we find the conviction to go through with them. So we're going to talk to our City Line experts about their wins in the past. I'm going to start with you, Elle. Like, what is the New Year's resolution you actually went through with? And it was successful in your eyes. Yeah, so in 2013, uh, it was in January, and I decided I was going to make this the healthiest year of my life. I was tired of getting sick. I noticed the year before I was getting sick a lot in doctor's offices, yeah. and I was like, forget this. So I decided to get on my health journey, went, started working out, started eating right, and ended up falling in love with it so much that I became a certified personal trainer that year and started Amazing. teaching classes. Wow. There's nothing better than feeling good. Yeah. There's nothing Never better than back. feeling good. That is amazing. Okay, so you can stick with resolutions. Definitely. Dev, how about you? Is there something that you said, I'm gonna stick to this, and you have stuck to it? During the pandemic, yes. uh, I developed some very poor eating habits. Mm. Filming a lot and uh, just overeating, just in the kitchen all the time. Yeah. Uh, so I decided to start working with a personal trainer mm -hmm. and a nutritionist and getting my nutrition intact. And from last February mm -hmm. to now, I've dropped 45 pounds. Oh my God, it's been that much. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know what? Weight loss is an interesting thing. It's a number on a scale. I want to know how you feel. I've never felt better. Good. But, yeah. Yeah, that's the important thing to me. It's like. A, we're all, we all have our own selves inside and we all have the shell that the world sees, but how do you feel? You know, if those 45 pounds have brought you back closer to making you feel good, then have at it, good for you. I think a bonus is that, you know, I cook with lots of spices and I can make meal yeah. prep really exciting and, and, and you'll see that journey soon. You make everything you touch taste delicious. <laughs> so it can be the healthiest thing ever, you're gonna make it delicious. Belisha, really quick, we gotta go. Mine was I wanted to grow my platform. I started social like literally a year ago and I was like, wouldn't it be cool to be on TV? Where am I what? right now? Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love having you on this show. We love having you watch us at home, everybody. Thank you so much for this. We loved having you in studio with us. You were great.